coming out yesterday, day before, more or less in favor of add the words. Um, I, well, I could, I could be really optimistic and say it's really going to be favorable. I actually think it's a real political move by this church because they didn't just say add the words. They yeah. said add the words and include a religious exemption. Re, they're on the Hobby Lobby train. Yeah. We're laying the foundation for that, I think. And that's a problem. I mean, Lauren pointed out, we don't exempt religious organizations from other types of discrimination. And I don't think anybody's forcing a church to do marriages that the church's doctrine would not support. But these religious employment entities, Title VII, um, doesn't give religious exemptions. We don't discriminate. And that's been our history. When, when um, Loving was decided, there were many religious organizations that also said, we don't do interracial marriage. And the US Supreme Court said, you know, miscegenation laws were unconstitutional. Um, and, and, and the civil rights laws were passed at the same time, and you know, no religious exemption was given for those churches. Do you have to be a church under this proposed legislation? Religious yes. organization. And religious organization. So a yes. person like Ram the Bakery, um, if they're just running a work bakery, just because they're a member of a church, they couldn't get the exemption, could they? Well. Hobby Lobby is not, yeah, that's right. yeah. I don't know, but Hobby Lobby, you know, Pat, there's no Hobby Lobbies around here, but I'm assuming many of you, it's just like Mike, it's a different version of Michael's, it's a great yeah, right. big huge store, it's a closely held company in the sense that their stock is not publicly traded, and in the case the court makes a big, draws a big line and says we're not talking about publicly traded <coughs> big companies, but I mean, these privately held companies can be massive, massive, and uh, they have no religious purpose in their corporate charter. Yeah. What, what might the, uh, uh, the Mormon Church's actions have to do with the possible resurrection of the Romney uh, candidacy? Oh, you know, I actually think the Mormon, I think they have everything to do with that, and they, they also make me feel like the Robert, the grant of cert was done for those political reasons. I, I hate to be that cynical, and I, I usually try not to be with regard to the court, but I, I really do think that they've decided the gay marriage issue is lost. Mm -hmm. They don't want to have to campaign on it in those jurisdictions that don't have it. They want something to happen that takes it all out of their arena and puts it in some other arena, and the court Stopping this whole silliness and overruling the Sixth Circuit will do that. And, and I think that, that that's a lot. Of, I, I do think that there's just a lot to that. Who can know? We can't be brain, you know, brain, mind readers, but yeah. So Liz, if we take the, your first bullet up there um, and frame it a little differently, if the court reverses the, the Sixth Circuit decision, then does DOMA go away? No. Um, it totally depends on what they <coughs> say. But I think so. If the court reverses the Sixth Circuit, I think the court is, that means the decision is not going to be on federalism grounds. And they are going to have to engage the equal protection argument. Um, and they're going to have to say that um, these laws, including ones that were adopted 50 years ago, are, they, they have become so informed with animus that they cannot be rationally justified. Um, and I would think that that would apply to Section 2 of the um, DOMA also. So, I hope you're right. We'll see what they do, but yeah. yeah. Is there any historical precedent for gay marriage? I don't mean relationships, but marriage itself through history. Um, no, not that I know no, there, no, there is. There's a famous um, book on it by the uh, Yale scholar. Uh, and quoting the marriage services from the Middle Ages. S oh. Is that Bill Eskridge? Is that? Oh, uh, well, those those nice names. He died at AIDS. He's not this alive. Uh, He's more. I don't. I can't remember his name. He's written three books right, on, okay. on gay issues. Yale gay scholar. You can look him up. But I, you know, I think Western European law has traditionally been. I, I mean. I think a Western European marriage law 
and our law in the U.S. has grown out of religious Christian marriage laws, Catholic Church, and other uh, Christian offshoots in Europe, and has largely been different sex. Um, I think the history argument, it's just not one that's in my world worth fighting. Um, because I think you, you end up t taking isolated incidents. I, I, I don't think the record is as uniform as you might think it is, but I think it's just dominantly a record of heterosexual marriage. Um, but I kind of think I'm not sure that that matters. Circumstances change, the world changes around it, um, ensconcing social relationships into, um, you know, that kind of force. But I, I just think we don't have very much precedent for that in lots of different areas. And, and, uh, okay, isn't, isn't that a question of whether we're going to define the United States Constitution as the Christian nation question? I don't think it's quite that simple. I don't think it's quite that simple, although there has that impact. I mean, historically, long before this debate came up, the U.S. Supreme Court has, and, and the legislature have, looked at a whole bunch of things to decide what the words in the Constitution mean. Um, and they've looked at practices, they've looked at history, they've looked at tradition, they've looked at changing mores, they've looked at a whole bunch of things that reflect sort of the felt needs and mores of society at given points in time in our history. And so I think it's perfectly relevant to look at the history of marriage and to consider the fact that marriage has traditionally been um, a relationship between men and women when you're evaluating whether this new law change is good public policy or is constitutional. Well, the separation of church and state, though, means you can't take the religious principles and put them into Well, that's kind of my argument. We've done lots of things with marriage law that is not consistent with our religious norms about marriage. So the big one that I always talk about with my students is no-fault divorce. Anyone who wants to argue that the advent of no-fault divorce did not affect religious notions of marriage doesn't, hasn't looked at it. <coughs> the Catholic Church has been, prof definitions of marriage have been profoundly affected. And the Catholic Church has had to um, bre uh, expand this whole inter-church canonical system of granting annulments under circumstances where 100 years ago they would have never granted an annulment because they have church members who are divorced in the secular court and who want to be recognized as not married by the church so that they can remarry within the church. We do change. We, you know, and, and that's a profound impact on the, on the Catholic Church and on that church's ability to define what marriage means for the church. Um, but I argue we have the First Amendment out there so that the church's need to have marriage defined that way isn't an argument for why public policy should go that way. We've got to consider secular arguments. But I think it's really important to be respectful. Recognizing gay marriage is going to have a profound impact on the teachings of certain conservative religions. It just is. And to say that it's not, I think, is to be fairly disrespectful of those religious traditions. But I still don't mean that those religious, I don't think those, the First Amendment means that those religious traditions don't get to dictate public policy in a way that protects them. I can't remember which one of the major southern churches, but after the Supreme Court said, you can't prohibit somebody who's not white from marrying somebody, <laughs> Sorry, somebody who is white. And I mean, it took them a couple decades to change their church rules to say they would perform right. weddings between somebody who was not white and somebody who was white. I mean, I, I think it's important to pay attention, but I don't think it's an argument against yeah. secular recognition of same-sex marriage. Okay. We do change well, them. We sure do. Thank you for coming. Oh, okay. yes. <laughs> okay, no. Thanks so much. I want to tell our members that yes. um, on behalf of the State League, our President Gary Roberts sent a letter to the State Affairs Committee Good. urging them to add the words. And we yeah. all know it's going to be a tough road, but we, we want it to be official. Keep our fingers crossed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.